All right, so hello again, and welcome back to Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, third video for Tuesday. That's whenever the CG releases stuff, they stagger it out there today. So we've got information on Datacron set 11 to start off with. The relic requirements are still the same as Datacron set 10. Maybe that'll be the way moving forward. I certainly hope so, because that makes getting the Datacrons a little bit less of a hectic mess. But uh, the relic requirements are relic 1, 3, and 5. Now, for the stats, we are not losing defense. We are not losing defense in the slice, and then it gets worse. We're gaining max health and max protection. We are gaining crit, I mean, crit damage isn't that bad to deal with, accuracy and health steal. But the top three, why? Why, CG? We're, we finally have gotten rid of the defense set, from uh, defense rolls from set nine. And then you turn around, and bring it in and run it back with still the ridiculous amounts of rolls that you can get like 25 50 percent 50 to 75 75 to 100 percent i mean of course now you won't be focusing only on that because if you want to make your teams even beefier you're going to want extra protection or health depend on which team you're running it with because it's not just going to be a one alignment uh dc set it is going to be both light side and dark side so the level 3 rolls are the same for both. Whenever an ally resists a debuff, they recover 2% health protection. Whenever an ally... And whenever you start the battle, the light side or dark side allies start with protection up for 2 turns. Whenever they use a basic, they'll be getting crit chance up, crit damage up and offense up for 2 turns. And whenever and uh, you start the battle, allies... Whenever uh, like light side or dark side allies gain tenacity up, they'll gain 10% protection up, stacking for 2 turns interesting stuff i mean there are some good ones in there like whenever you use a basic you're going to be gaining crit chance and crit damage and offense up that'd be pretty nice uh debuff recovery is eh, protection ups nice as well there's some good ones here it's going to be more of a uh, speculating on what you want to use where now for the factions we have as i figured as i kind of figured we would we have unaligned force user ewoks ew rebels and imperial troopers basically a massive tie-in to the surge of GL Leia's and uh, Malikos's that everyone will be working through. So starting from the top going to the bottom we'll look through the unaligned force user stuff. Whenever a light side or dark side unaligned forces gains buff or debuff all light side and dark side unaligned forces gain 5% stacking maxing at 200% until the end of the turn. That'd be pretty great. Whenever they grant buffs to another ally, gain 10% TM. Whenever the first time a unaligned force user ally falls below 50% health, all unaligned force user allies reduce their cooldowns by one and gain 10% TM. It's pretty spicy as well. Whenever unaligned force user allies target another ally with an ability, they gain they both gain 5% defense, max health, max protection, and often stacking until the end of the battle. So that would be a good one for a seer team to have. Or just seer to be having anyways or a ray team as well because ray is unaligned force user and whenever uh unaligned forces uh, use a special ability on their turn they gain rip save for two turns so there's a couple ways you can run unaligned force user teams you can do the rip a say one you can do the uh buff or debuff one for more defense because there are there is a terran Malakos and a Seer Junda role. Yeah, there's roles for those two, so there's two different ways you can run the Seer team. Ray will be getting a boost yet again. So I hope everyone's ready for more nightmarish things because it get, it'll be getting worse. Ewok stuff is more fun shenanigans whenever they attack at a turn. They're getting 2% off and stacking, maxing at 100% until the end of the battle. Whenever a debuff expires on an enemy, they gain 2% potency and tenacity until the end of the battle. Spicy. At start of the battle, they gain retribution for three turns. Whenever they stun an enemy, they gain speed up and offense up for two turns and inflict exposed for two turns at the end of that turn, which can't be evaded. And whenever an Ewok ally critically hits an enemy during their turn, they gain 10% offense stacking for two turns. So the Ewok ones are a little bit less haphazard. Obviously, the attack at a turn one will be great, and the debuff one will also be great for them because more potency and tenacity will be great for the Ewoks to have. So there are some good spicy ones. I'm not really going to care about the Ewoks because I am not going to be working up more Ewoks outside of the Leia Rex. Now, for Imperial Troopers. I was quite thrilled to see this one because there are some nice Imperial Troopers and I have them all worked up, except for Scout Trooper. Please, CG, drop her on a note or give us an, an event so where she has 
like double drops for her and Drogon, like not double drops, but like increased drops for her and Drogon, like he did for Nisa and Rex. Anyways, so Imperial Troopers, they have whenever they inflict debuff an enemy, all Imperial Trooper allies gain 4% crit damage stacking, maxing out at 80% until the end of the battle. At the end of the turn, uh, Imperial Trooper allies recover 50% protection if they inflicted at least 5 debuffs that turn. That one's kind of very niche. Uh, you know, an Iden team could probably pull it off. I don't know about the Veers team, but maybe the um, Dark Trooper Moff Gideon team and Territory War could do it. I don't know. We'll have to see. At the end of the turn, uh, Imperial Trooper allies gain defense up, defense pin up, and offense up for a turn. Uh, whenever they defeat an enemy, they take a bonus turn. And probably the best one, maybe, for the Imperial Troopers, besides the whenever they inflict a debuff, uh, at the start of the turn, Imperial Trooper allies gain offense equal to 400% of their current defense until the end of the battle. And then they also lose 50% defense until the end of the battle. So it's a toss-up on that, but that's also a lot of extra offensive firepower for the Imperial Troopers. So can't really complain there. Now, for the Rebels. Good lord, this is a nightmare. I haven't even read them all. So the first one, god, why? Whenever they attack at a turn, they dispel all the buffs on themselves. CLS and GL Leia teams are going to love that. All the Rebel teams are going to love that. Whenever Rebel allies take start to turn with fewer than two buffs, all of the allies gain 15% TM. Okay. Kind of... Okay, that's an odd choice. Whenever Rebel allies damage all... All enemies with the ability to grant tenacity up for two turns to all allies. So that's, you know, an R2, a Chu PO kind of thing. Anyone that does an AoE, Chewy himself. But, you know, at the start of the turn, if non Galactic Legend Rebel allies have 50% or more TM, they're, the, the damage they receive is boosted by 75% until the end of the battle. So basically, this is just the repeat of the Wookiee and Jedi roll from Thadacron set 10. So, okay. And whenever a Rebel ally deals damage to an enemy, no other enemies ability blocked inflict ability block oh wow okay so wow the rebel one is spicy as hell because they can whenever they attack at a turn that they spell all debuffs on themselves uh they can grant tenacity up to everyone they can take reduced damage if they have 50 percent more tm and also they have the ability block roll wow 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 cg you have gone all out on making this a nightmare of a datacron set we even we haven't even gotten to the character roles yet because they there are 17 different roles and Leia Leia Organa has a fucking role. Why in the hell does she have why? Why CG? I thought we got away from this shit where you gave GLs a level 9 role. Why on why? Just why CG? Why? So we'll just read through them from top to bottom because I'm not going to try to sort through them by the alignment. So Terran Malikos is, at start of battle, he gains five stacks of edge of Mattis and three stacks of resilient defense, which cannot be copied, dispelled, or prevented. That is extremely good for him because that means you have to hit him. That is like a miniature Savage Omni right there. And the first time he gains 20 stacks of edge of Mattis, he takes a bonus turn in his cooldowns reset. That is nutty as nutty can be because if you can take Malakos into a team of full unaligned force users and he's not in the steer team that would be a great data crown right there for him fulcrums is whenever she gains a buff all light and dark side unaligned force users recover two percent health and protection that is great for a seer team because whenever she does her little form up thing whatever it is in the middle of the ability where she like gains all the buffs that is a lot of health and protection recovery right there and if she has four or more buffs at the start of her turn she ignores ton effects in and enemies defeated by ahsoka cannot be revived lovely oh god princess nisa's ewoks have plus 10 percent often stacking for each buff on them and nisa gains two percent crit damage stacking max at 100 whenever she attacks out of turn the first time each ewok is defeated they are revived with 100 percent health protection why in the hell do the Ewoks need a revive mechanic? Fuck right off, CG. Scout Troopers. Whenever a Scout Trooper inflicts a debuff, she, her Imperial Precision ability gains 6% bonus damage, stacking, maxing at 300% until the end of the battle. Imperial Precision grants Imperial Trooper allies bonuses up for one turn, and Imperial Remnant allies up, offense up for one turn. That's basically what it does anyways, but okay. Now for Leia Organa's. Why? Why, why is, let me repeat again. Why does Leia Organa need a level 9 roll on the Staticron set? Please tell me why, CG. 
Second Wind heals an additional 50% health and protection. What does that do base? I don't remember. I'm legitimately pissed. What the hell does Second Wind do? Jesus Christ. So on top of the 50% health and protection base that Second Wind gives, they'll now be getting an additional 50% health protection. So 100, they get 100% health and protection recovery whenever they're healed by second wind. And if it's dispelled, that ally recovers 100% protection instead. Why? Why? And at the start of her turn, if no other allies have a taunt effect, the healthiest other rebel tank ally gains taunt for two turns. This effect can only happen once per battle. So that second part is fine. But why? Why does second wind need to be so busted? That is going to make... Leia teams even more of a nightmare. Captain Drogons. At the start of the battle, all rebel allies gain keen stratagem, and Captain Drogon takes a bonus turn. Why? Why? All rebel allies gain 200% max health and are immune to ability block and fear until the end of the turn. Fucking why? Why do they need to make those two so busted? Why? Visa's Mars is a write-off whenever another ally is defeated. She takes a bonus turn or cooldowns reset, whatever. Seer Junos is a bit interesting. Whenever she uses an ability, they deal she deals more damage equal to half of their tenacity percentage, max 100 percent more damage. This effect will only trigger if she has more than 0% tenacity. So if I pull mine up real quick, I imagine I don't have a lot of tenacity on her because that means a lot of people are gonna be modding her for tenacity. Very slow and tenacious person. Yeah, that is not a lot of bonus tenacity. I don't know if people will be willing to make her more tenacity based, but you know, it'll be an interesting one. Chief Chirpas is whenever they attack out of turn, they recover 20% health protection. Why? Wickets, he gains 15% TM whenever another ally uses a special ability on his turn. Lovely. Idens is interesting. The first time she blows, falls below 30% health, she dispels all the buffs on herself and recovers 40% health and gains a bonus turn. So it's a great way of keeping herself alive and rolling to slow down any sort of tr like TM train or just assist attack. And, you know, just a way to help her slow them down. Colonel Stark says whenever he critically hits an enemy, he gains 10% crit damage, defense pin, and offense max uh stacking max to 200 percent until the end of battle it's a pretty spicy one you can run it with the uh you can run that with the veers team which will be fine stormtroopers is whenever he loses taunt you remove 50 percent team tm from all enemies okay rollo is the first time she's defeated they're revive 100 percent health gain protection over time 75 percent for two turns and takes a bonus turn lovely so she'll die revive and then aoe you with her bombing run wedge is whenever he uses an ability on their turn, oh, whenever an ally, sorry, whenever an ally uses an ability on their turn, wedge assist, dealing 50% more damage, so that's a Elacron again. Saw, uh, he has plus 5 max percent health and max protection per relic amplifier level, and the damage they receive is decreased by 15%. Okie dokie. And whenever Akbar's is whenever another ally attacks during his turn, that uh, him and that ally gain 25% TM. So the most ludicrous ones, it seems, will be probably the Nisa, the Leia, Drogon. Uh, Malikosis is also going to be busted, Fulcrums. Basically, the first six are going to be extremely annoying. Scout Troopers can be a bit of a problem. I need to look at Imperial Precision again because I don't remember what all it does. But I know I have the Zeta, but like... Oh, okay, so what, okay, so what the Datacron is basically doing is giving the potency up and offense up from her basic and putting it onto that datacron as well based off of the uh imperial precision uh special okay that's an interesting choice but yeah i'm sorry that i got really uh extremely loud at the end of this but like the fact that we having a rerun of the defense cron now with max protection and max health increases and in the fact that leia a GL. I thought we got away from this CG. Why in the fucking hell does Leia need a Datacron? Why does Drogon need a Datacron? Why? I know why. It's because you want to make the whales happy that they splurged thousands of dollars on them. And now they can be like, oh, time to go get my new Datacrons for these two and make life a living hell for everyone else that doesn't have her. <laughs> I'm just... I am, uh... I'm baffled. I, I I don't believe CG. I can't believe CG has done this. I'm honestly quite disappointed. Um, 
but a lot of there are there are some good nuggets of fun in here with the faction alignments and all that but like man those level nine rolls are going to be a nightmare to deal with especially leia drogon nisa fulcrum malikos seers can be interesting but uh she need she'll need to have like a lot more tenacity so how much base tenacity does she, does she have oh 81 percent. so oh yeah i forgot because i don't have the uh the finalizer on yet she doesn't have as much tenacity as she would have normally so she gets an additional 40 percent tenacity so 40 plus what i have on her right now we'll push her over to i gotta find her real quick Okay, so 98-ish percent tenacity. That's not bad. So the tenacity one's not a bad shout for her, but I feel like the Malakos one would be a lot better. I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, sorry for making this so long. I didn't expect it to be so long, but I didn't also expect to get so angry so quickly at the end of here with looking at the uh, character level 9 rolls. But uh, yeah. If y'all enjoyed, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of this Datacron set in the comments below. And I will catch you guys later on. I hope you have a good rest of your day.